Everybody was cheering last night. That's why my voice hurts, so I know you can't speak out. So, big praise to God for Texas A&M getting the first win. Amen. How many Longhorns we got in the house? <laughs> we'll pray for you. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think Charlie Strong was the answer, but uh, good luck to you. <laughs> so, yeah, my voice is a little ragged this morning. We, uh, we got a little rowdy last night at the A&M game there, and... Uh, Man, God is good. God is good. We got a quarterback that can run faster and I don't know what. Now he's hurt. But it, just, way, just the way it goes for us, I guess. Uh, so anyway, we're going to try to limp through this with my voice and a couple of water breaks and all that good stuff. I want to start this morning. You know, September the 1st was uh, a whole, like, 200 state laws went into effect in the state of Texas. And I'm, I'm sad to say that it has come to this, that the state of Texas has to pass a bill to support God. But, just so you know, effective September the 1st of this year, 2015, House Bill number 315 was enacted and put in the legislature, in God we trust, can be placed on license plate in the state of Texas. Amen. Just, just a, I didn't read all 200. I'm sure there was more, but that one caught my eye. And like I said, I, it's sad that we have to come to that. Uh, you know, in my prayer, I mentioned being scattered and strength in numbers. And we're going to touch on that a little bit more in, in just a second. <coughs> but I want to start you out. If you go to your Bibles on page 915, we're going to be in 2 Timothy 3. And I want you to listen to what Paul's saying here. On page 915 and learning the ropes. I'm sorry. Learning the ropes. And I'm not reading from learning the ropes. It's going to sound a little different. I'm reading out of my study Bible. So, 2 Timothy 3 says, But mark this. There will be terrible times in the last days. People will be lovers of themselves. Lovers of money, boastful, proud, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, without love, unforgiving, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not lovers of the good, treacherous, rash, conceited, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. Having a form of godliness but denying its power have nothing to do with such people. Anybody watch the news lately? Anybody step outside their front door and see what's going on in their neighborhood? Everything I just said is happening right now. Agree with me on that? Amen. There's all kinds of bad stuff going on in the, in the world right now. So what does it say? There will be terrible times in the last days. There's terrible times right now. Are we in the last days? I don't know. I believe we're a heck of a lot closer than we were. I believe Jesus is coming. I believe Jesus is coming down here and He's going to take everything and wipe it clean. Jesus is going to take what's good and He's going to take it to heaven and what's bad is going to hell. That's what the Bible tells us. So how do we get to God? What's, what's our passage to God? How, how are we supposed to get to God? Is it by coming to church on Sunday and Wednesday? Is it by talking to Christians that we know? Is it, is it reading the Bible? Is it being baptized? How do we get to God? Flip over with me to... Uh, let's start on page 738. We're going to be in Matthew. Chapter 7, verses 13 and 14. 738, we're learning the ropes. Enter through the narrow gate. For wide is the gate and broad is the road that leads to destruction. Many enter through it, but the gate, the, but small is the gate, and narrow the road that leads to life, and only a few find it. Wide is the gate that leads to destruction. It's the easy path. It's the road that the majority of people want to take because they don't want to take the time to get to know God. They don't want to take the time to get to know our Lord and Savior. So they take the easy path. The gate is narrow that leads to heaven, and not many find it. <clears throat> I 
go over a few more pages to uh, page 819. We're going to be in John chapter 10, verse 9 and 10, and then 11 and 12. And when I read you this one, we're, we're going to, this is the basis of the day. I'm going to come back to this several times. But on page 819, John chapter 10, verse 9 and 10, I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved. They will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal, kill, and destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. <clears throat> Some books it says, I am the door. This is Jesus talking. I am the door. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved. They will be able to come in and go out and find green pasture. <clears throat> Psalms 23. I, I've been pulling a lot of out of funerals for here for some reason. I don't know why. I had posted something to Facebook that was a wedding deal the other day. Now I'm in the funerals. But Psalms 23 2 says, He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. Right here in, in John, Jesus is telling us that we'll find green pastures if we find the door. Flip over a few more pages to page 823, John 14, 6. Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. So there you're, he's the gate, he's the door, he's the way. That's how we get to heaven. We have to find the door. Y'all are all been wondering, everybody's asking me today why my closet door is here. Y'all heard about these six pound doors? Y'all ever heard the history behind these doors? It's called the cross and Bible door. Or the Christian door. Rumor has it that in the 1800's, the Knights Templar built these doors so that people who were in, in need of refuge would see this door and they would know that they had a safe place to go. Did everybody see the cross and Bible on here? Let me flip it around for you. Six panel door. You got your cross and you got your open Bible down here at the bottom. Times of need, people seeking refuge, they didn't know where to go, what to do. They saw this symbolism on somebody's house and they knew they had a safe harbor. They knew they had somewhere to run to, somewhere to go where they would be protected and feel safe. Jesus is the door. Jesus says, Whoever enters through me will be saved. They will come in and go out and find green pasture. So what does that mean, Brother Shevin? Why, why, if we find the door, why do we want to come back out once we've gone in? Because Jesus has given us that freedom to come and go as we please under His grace. And you can find green pasture on either side of the door. You can go in the door and you can find green pasture in His presence. You can go out the door and you can find green pasture out of His presence. You can go in the door and you can find green pasture under the anointment. You can go out the door and you can find green pasture at your job. You can go in the door and find green pasture with your family. You can go out the door and find green pasture with your friend. It doesn't matter. In, out. In, out. There's green pasture because Jesus gave it to you. Jesus said He will give you life and give it to you abundantly if you find the door. You have to find the door, folks. There's strength in numbers. <coughs> in Acts, I'm not going to read Acts, but if you, if you want some homework, read Acts 1, where it talks about after Jesus' ascension, Christians scattered. They ran from the church. They denied Jesus. They started cursing. 
doing all these bad things. And it took him 40 days to come back and hurt them all back together. But why did he do that? Jesus says, I come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. Jesus is telling you that he comes against anything, anything that may harm you, that may do you wrong, that may cause you pain. Jesus comes. He's telling you he's coming. But he also warns you of this. The thief comes only to steal, kill, and destroy. The thief is here. The thief is stealing, killing, and destroying. And we're scattered. I've preached on unity a couple of times this past month. Alan's touched on unity a, past, a few past months. And we've been directing it towards this group right here. But let me tell you something. The entire world is scattered. Christians all over the world are running from what they believe in. They are running from Jesus Christ. They are running from the cross. They are running from the Bible. And they're hiding under rocks. We have no idea why we're doing it. If we stand strong in our faith, and we truly believe with all of our heart what Jesus declares in this book. We have no reason to run. We have no reason to hide. The world cannot persecute us to the fullest at any given time. Because Jesus said, I will come. I will come and give you life more abundantly than you could ever imagine. What do we know about the devil? The devil's the thief. Jesus is talking about the thief in that scripture, and John, he's talking about the devil. The devil knows that if he can scatter the herd, he can pick us off individually. But Jesus knows there's strength in numbers. That's why Jesus is coming back. He's got to gather the herd again. Because we've all scattered and the devil is picking us off one by one. Forty days it took Jesus and Acts to, to get everybody back together again. And when he got them all back, there was still one missing. So he gathered them all up in the, in the holy room upstairs and he, and he went back down. He had to come back down here to get Thomas. Because Thomas was still running and scared. But he got Thomas back. And when he got them all together, he sat them down and he said, look, I have come to give you life more abundant. Stay together in Jerusalem and wait for the Holy Spirit to come arm you more. Stay together. He wants everyone to stay together. If you look in John where he's talking about the thief, he's giving you the warning. He's telling you that the thief is coming. He's telling you that there's going to be trouble. Trouble is coming. The devil is coming. The devil is coming. The thief is coming. The thief is coming. The devil is coming. Are you prepared? What are you going to do if you get notification that a thief's coming to your house? Are you going to leave the windows open? Are you going to leave the door unlocked? The thief is coming. You have to be prepared. You have to get prepared. You know, I don't know what I did to upset you, but we got to get over it. I don't know what I did to hurt your feelings, but we got to get over it. We have to come together, unified, Christians, all around the world, put our differences aside and prepare to fight the fight.
I got a devil to fight. I could have stayed in bed this morning, but I got a devil to fight. I could have called in sick, but I got a devil to fight. I could have gone to another church, but you know what? I got to lock the doors. The thief is coming. Man. Amen. Yeah. Amen. We have got to stand on something. The entire world. I'm not just preaching to you. I'm preaching to everybody that can hear me. And I don't know if outside can hear me or not, but I'm screaming loud enough to think. We have got to stand together and fight the devil. I had a couple of people ask me this morning about the lady that wouldn't give the, the marriage license to the gay couple. She was an elected official, so she can't be fired. Did she not do her job? Yeah, she didn't do her job. But here's what I say to the result of that entire thing. If American employers have to provide prayer time for Muslim employees, then this lady should not have gone to jail. Amen. She stood up for what she believed in. No different than any other religion standing up for what they believe in. I think she knew people were scattered. If uh, I keep finding that good spot, but it's blowing on the microphone, so I got to move. Air conditioner feels good over there. Uh, you know, why does Jesus tell us that the gate is narrow? Why is the door narrow? Why is it harder to find that door than it is the, the door that, that leads to destruction? Jesus is telling you, I mean, there's all, all sorts of instances where he's telling you why, but let me break it down for you pretty simply. Being a Christian is not easy. And I believe that lady that, that's in jail right now for standing up for her beliefs is proof of that. God bless her. It is uh, religious persecution, uh, race wars, I mean, you name it. I, I can't sit here and think of all of them. But let me tell you something. If you're willing to fight for Jesus, He's willing to fight for you. And He's willing to fight for you whether you want to fight or not. Matter of fact, He'll fight for you so you don't have to. But getting to that narrow door is difficult. In instances where you stand up for what you believe in is what makes it difficult. Not everybody agrees. Not everybody believes what we believe. This door, I mean, me and Louis Heathrows ain't getting through this door together. Okay? It's a narrow door. It's difficult to find that door. And, and we're referred to as sheep in the Bible. The Bible calls us sheep. The gate is narrow for the sheep, but they find green pastures in the gate, and they find green pastures out the gate. Because Jesus gave us that freedom under His grace. So is it going to be difficult for me and Lewis to get through this door? You betcha. You betcha. We're going to have to hold each other tight. But that's what Jesus wants us to do. Jesus wants us to hold each other tight. Come together. <coughs> hold each other tight. And stay together. Even though we're in the last days, do not scatter. Stay in Jerusalem. Stay right here in Santa Fe, ladies and gentlemen. Don't run anywhere. Saltgrass Cowboy Church doors are always going to be open. We're not going anywhere. I'm not going anywhere. Alan's not going anywhere. If anybody else wants to go anywhere, you know what? Let me talk to you before you leave. Stay together. Unity. I didn't get to go to the uh, prayer vigil the other night at, the, at Gulf Greyhound Park, but I heard it was an awesome turnout. Unity. 
if we can back Blue, why can't we back Jesus? Amen. I think that was a great cause. I really do. Don't get me wrong. But it pains my heart to see people not standing up for Jesus the way they're standing up for the policeman. Somewhere down the road, way on down the road, priorities got shook up. Priorities got tossed. And we lost our vision. Uh, but there's good news. There's good news. Where do I find this door? Is this where I find the door? Saltgrass Cowboy Church where I find the door? First Baptist Church where I find the door? Holy Trinity Church, is that where I find the door? Where do I find the door? Brother, what do you say, Brother Daniel? Right there. Right there in the Bible, that's where you find the door? <laughs> I'm here to tell you, Brother Daniel, you're right. The door is in the Bible. And once you find the door in the Bible, the door becomes your heart. Wherever you go, the door is there. You are free to come in that door and go out that door. You do not have to be in a specific geographical location to find the door. You don't have to come talk to Brother Kevin to find the door. You don't have to go talk to the high priest to find the door. If you have trouble and it's 2 o'clock in the morning and you can't get Brother Kevin to answer the phone to pray for you, pray for yourself. The door is there. You know Him. His name is Jesus Christ. He is the door, the way, the light. He is everything. The Alpha, the Omega. He is the High Priest. And He is so... What's the word? He is accommodating. He is so accommodating. He is there when you ask Him to be there. He's there when you don't even know He's there. He's there when you don't want Him there. He is the door. Find the door. And I, I just, so we make things a little bit lighter here. If you call me at 2 a.m., I may hang up on you because I don't see real well without my glasses, so I'll get back to you as soon as I put my glasses on and see who you were. But I will pray with you at 2 o'clock in the morning. <clears throat> you know, the... Uh, the time that we're in now. Everybody needs to, needs to feel 100% confident in what I just told you. Jesus is with you around the clock. He's here right now. Yes, ma'am. I can tell that because Matt's little daughter, Peyton, was up here running around on stage with the Holy Spirit while I go, Woo! I knew he was here right then. I stole that because uh, Mason did that one time to Keith. But uh, <clears throat> the truth is, folks, if you have a relationship with Jesus Christ, you have nothing to be afraid of. Nothing to run from. Nothing to hide from. You can go in the door and find your green pasture. You can go out the door and find your green pasture. Because God, Jesus said He's coming to give you life and to the fullest. What more do you need to hear? What more do you need for me to try to make you understand? There's only one way we're getting to heaven. And it's through the door. The narrow gate. The narrow way. The narrow door. Not the wide door. Everybody's on that path. When you start throwing a couple of ropes over on that side and pulling them back across because they're going down the wrong road because it's easy. They don't want to deal with being a Christian. They don't want to fight the fight. They don't understand the fight. But ladies and gentlemen, the fight is here. The fight is here and I can't tell you enough. The thief is coming. The devil is coming. He may not have made it to Santa Fe yet, but he's on his way. So are you going to lay in bed in the morning, or are you going to get up and lock the door? 
Are you going to continue to carry on with your foolish feud? Or are you going to make amends so that we can fight the devil together? Are you going to continue to badmouth people you don't really understand? Or are you going to say, you know what, I don't have time for you. i got a devil to fight. All right, let's see where I'm at here. I done proved Mr. Linda right again and started preaching. Forgot all about my notes. This is terrible. <laughs> Talk to you for just a few minutes about uh, when Jesus tells us that we need to hate those closest to us. What does he truly mean? You cannot be a follower of mine unless you hate your mother, your father, your sister, your brother. You gotta hate all that stuff to be able to follow Jesus. What's he really telling you? In Luke 14, 26, Jesus says, If anyone comes to me and does not hate his father and mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters, yes, his very own life, he cannot be my disciple. To hate one's family. And even one's life is a bit of Jesus' rhetoric, okay? He's not, he's not really telling you to hate everybody you love because he's preaching to you in the Bible to love everybody. So he's not truly saying that to you. Here's what he's telling you. <clears throat> to hate one's family and even one's life refers to desiring something less than something more. In other words, a Christian's love for living God's way of life has to be greater than their love for anything else. Jesus has to be number one. Okay? God, family, friends, you have to have that priority. He doesn't want you to hate your mother or your father. He wants you to love Him more than you love your mother and father. He wants you to love Him more than you love your car. He wants you to love him more than you love your horse. He wants you to love him more than you love your family. Jesus has to be at the top at all times. And the door is open. Once that's accomplished and you make it to the door and you find your green pastures and you wander around eating all that beautiful grass and laying down by those beautiful streams, you can get up and go out the door. And you can do the same thing. It's truly an amazing thing to think about that Jesus gave us this much freedom. And the world has turned on him. The world has taken him and put him in the back seat. He's no longer up front driving. People don't understand the love and the freedom that we have. And if, if I can't get anything across to you today other than this, know this. Once you find the door, Jesus has given you so much grace that you have the freedom to come and go as you please. That doesn't mean we're running from Jesus. We go in the door... Hey, Jesus, green pastures, cool. I'm going to step outside. That don't mean we're turning our back on Him. Okay? Grace is not a hall pass, folks. Grace is not a hall pass to run and do whatever the heck you please. You can't just go all crazy and, and, and turn your back on Him after you've accepted Him and still expect to receive that grace. Grace is not a hall pass. It's something you have to work for. It's something you have to continually do to stay on the path to the narrow gate. If you jump off onto the wide path because that's where all your buddies are at, because it's easier over there, you can go to the bar and have a couple of beers, play a couple of games of pool, jump back over here to the narrow path and go to church on Sunday and think everything's right, you're wrong. That's not how it works. Once you're on the narrow path, why do you think this path is so narrow? 
Not everybody finds that path. Because it's hard. When's the last time you, you were up for a promotion and you had to do X, Y, and Z to get that promotion? And you decided, I'm going to take a couple of shortcuts 